Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. We're at episode number 1733 today. Thank you so much for joining me for it. Thank you so much for subscribing wherever you get it. Thank you so much for the lovely ratings and reviews, especially about the April Fool's Day episode yesterday. And thank you so much for the patrons who are supporting silly jokes like that and more serious stuff as the days and weeks roll into celebration with their support at patreon.com slash SW7X7. So yes, in case you didn't happen to listen to the end of the episode yesterday, it was an April Fool's joke. There is not as of this moment, going to be a Phantom Menace re-release, let alone one that's a special edition with changes made to the existing movie. But if any of that changes, especially considering, as I mentioned yesterday, that there is going to be a 20th anniversary Phantom Menace panel at Star Wars Celebration Chicago, if anything changes, if there are updates about the re-release of the Phantom Menace or a re-release of the Phantom Menace even in any sort of like limited run situation then you will absolutely hear it from me on Star Wars 7x7 with a full disclosure of hey no I really mean it this time <laughs> so I thought it might be fun today to have a look at what other April Fool's Day gags had occurred related to Star Wars, but shockingly, there aren't a heck of a lot of them. And yeah, I unless I've missed a bunch, but I did a whole bunch of Google searches trying to see what I could come up with, and not a heck of a lot of them. There were a couple of news stories written, and you know, a couple of them centered around Ryan Johnson, a couple of them centered around the Game of Thrones guys, which I guess makes sense because the two of them are, you know, the next two, you know, filmmakers or sets of filmmakers in the case of the Game of Thrones guys, to be working on Star Wars movies. There was one item I found that was around the premise of Ryan Johnson being brought in to handle the reshoots for episode nine, and then there was another one that was based Based on an earlier story about George Lucas visiting the set of Game of Thrones and Entertainment Weekly republished it because they've got a whole big cover story going on and on today's story they also mentioned something new that the Game of Thrones guys were joking about the possibility of it being a Captain Phasma origin story. I guess this is not technically an April Fool's joke. It was just them joking around and it happened to be published on April 1st, but that their movie was going to be a Phasma origin story, which of course, as we know, has already been done. So it's actually, I guess, an adaptation of a book, or at least it would be if that's what they were actually doing. And there was a joke kind of combining the two where someone posted a story suggesting that Ryan Johnson would be directing the first of the movies that were going to be created by the Game of Thrones guys. And uh, let's see, there was another one about uh, Disney rebooting Star Wars and another one about um, Gerard Way, who is the former lead vocalist of My Chemical Romance and I guess who wrote the comic book that eventually became the source material for the Netflix series The Umbrella Academy, that he would be getting a chance to direct a Star Wars movie, so <laughs> that was out there. And there were a few that that went related to uh, Galaxy's Edge and getting fast passes for Galaxy's Edge rides, which are not available apparently, and uh, people making reservations for fast pass stuff or reservations to get into Galaxy's Edge that can't be done yet and that sort of thing and freaking people out about Galaxy's Edge stuff. So yeah, it was out there, but um, you know, I dare say... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm kind of flattered by Ryan Dassing, who is a patron emeritus of the show, who commented that it wouldn't be April Fool's Day until he checked out the show and you know saw what I had up my sleeve for this time around. And I don't know, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe I just do it differently. I don't know. Uh, it's just, it's a thing with me. And so, um, you know, it's not necessarily me, though, because there have been other April Fool's things in the past. And in fact, that in an episode on an April 2nd of 2015, where I'd been cataloging fun Star Wars April Fool's jokes and something like that. So it's not like I'm the only podcaster doing it, but, you know, I might be the only podcaster who is doing 
April Fool's Day episodes, but that may just be because I'm doing them every day. I don't know. I guess I should check the Star Wars Minute guys and see if they did an April Fool's Day episode since they're at least week daily. Well, thankfully, due to the magic of the internet and uh, video editing, I just checked. And no, it was a standard episode for them, or at least that's what's labeled as. And for the few minutes I just listened to check in on it, it's part of their Force Awakens coverage on Star Wars Minute. So no, it might just be me. So it occurred to me that it might be fun to look back at the previous ones I've done and also just at least tell you what I was also thinking about doing for this year so that way I just never do it again because <laughs> I keep thinking this is going to be a good idea and I never managed to pull it off. So uh, the one that I am not seemingly able to pull off at least at this point and who knows you know maybe some point down the line I'll be able to do it and everybody will forget that I've said this out loud, but I have wanted to get Pablo Hidalgo on the show and advertise the show as Pablo answering all your canon questions and then have the interview be completely and utterly about canon questions in the Transformers universe since he is a big Transformers fan. But yeah, I can't ever seem to get that interview arranged for some reason in time. So yeah, not this time. But in a previous year, without having to have Pablo on the show, I actually did an episode where I posited the notion that Pablo Hidalgo would be departing from the Lucasfilm story group to head up a new Transformers story group. So I guess there's a thing there going on. And so I did, that was the 2017 April Fool's Day episode. And in 2018, and I guess <laughs> this kind of counts in its way, but for the time that April Fool's Day happened, I had been going through the Last Jedi novelization and identifying a whole bunch of additional bits of information since it was a quote-unquote expanded edition. It was the first novelization that was touted as an expanded edition where we were learning more about the story of The Last Jedi than what had been shown to us on screen, lots more. And so I was in the middle of that and kept the title the same, but instead it was five minutes of me saying Porg, Porg, Porg and singing the word Porg. And it had been inspired essentially by the fact that for some reason Roku Depot, the folks over there that uh, review Star Wars podcasts, among other things that they do, started doing a Porg count for the number of times that the word Porg was said or mentioned on the various podcasts that they review. And so... Ultimately, I got into my head to say, all right, well, that would be an interesting thing to do for an April Fool's thing. And doing that for five minutes, just saying the word Porg, man, it's uh, <laughs> it can get a little tedious to do it, actually. And you just end up doing other things like singing the word Porg in the uh, manner of various Star Wars soundtracks or Indiana Jones <laughs> soundtracks or what have you. So... Um, it was kind of a good time for me, <laughs> ultimately, once I just, you know, like leaned into it and, and had a blast with it. And in 2016, the one that I did had to do, it was inspired by the fact that Colin Trevorrow, who at the time had been tapped to be working on episode nine, had expressed the desire to be able to shoot in space. And so I posited the notion that it was actually going to happen, but it was going to happen even sooner for episode eight and that Ryan Johnson would be able to actually, you know what? I didn't say Ryan Johnson was going to be directing episode eight in space. What I did say is that they would film some scenes in space and it had to do with the International Space Station and something to do with the Christopher Nolan movie Interstellar, I think, and these inflatable cubes that I had read about that could be added on to the ISS. And so I just went with it basically. And I'll tell you about the that crash that you might be hearing is my studio manager, Indy, apparently rewiring some of the <laughs> cabling around here. Um, I'll tell you what happened for the actual April Fool's 2015 situation after the break. Stay tuned. 
This episode is brought to you by Audible. You can get your free trial at sw7x7.com slash audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E. I've been checking out the audiobooks for Star Wars on Audible since the reboot of the canon with A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller. And every one I've listened to, I've enjoyed the heck out of. And now they're coming out with an audiobook exclusive, Jedi Lost. That's going to debut on April 30th. So the only way you're going to get that is by getting the audio version. So you might as well get a free trial for Audible and get your hands on it. You can go to sw7x7.com slash audible, sign up, and when it comes out, you'll be all set. Welcome back. So I think uh, Studio Manager Indy is done with cabling now, <laughs> thankfully. So unfortunately, he does not want to appear on the show, so he is going to keep quiet for the rest of the time. <laughs> but as far as April Fool's Day 2015, I didn't do an April Fool's Day episode. I mean, I did an episode on April Fool's Day, but it was not an April Fool's Day themed episode. In fact, it was about the magic hour at Star Wars Celebration Anaheim. That at least is how I described it. And specifically, it was the hour at which the episode seven panel, The Force Awakens, was going to happen at Celebration Anaheim. And it was, you know, basically talking about that and about the fact that at the time, the major cast members for The Force Awakens had not yet been announced as guests for that panel. And here we are, Four years later, in exactly the same situation where the episode nine panel is happening in less than two weeks, and we still haven't had any announcements about the cast that may be appearing in the episode nine panel. So, yeah, I guess history is repeating itself once again in a way, except for the fact that the April Fool's Day tradition, although it isn't every single April Fool's Day for Star Wars 7x7's history, it's all but one of them at the very least. So, Again, I hope you enjoyed the April Fool's Day prank yesterday about The Phantom Menace. And thank you so much for joining me for this episode of running down some of the April Fool's nonsense that happened yesterday. Not just here, but in and around the galaxy far, far away. And yeah, I think that'll do it for today's show. So <laughs> back to the normalcy of things beginning tomorrow. For now, though, it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me as always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.